Okay, so we have our enemies, we have our hero, and we have a bit of collision detection where we can shoot. Now, you'll notice a few things. Our bullets are going really, really fast in terms of how many are coming out at once. If I press the spacebar as fast as I can, I can get one, but if I just kind of press it casually, I get multiple. We're going to fix that a little bit later using something called a timer. But for now, we're going to see if we can get our enemy to move. Like in Space Invaders, they go back and forth, back and forth. So, just like we did with our bullet, we told our bullet to move by using set location. If I take that line of code, copy it, and go into the enemy, and in the act method, I paste it right here, watch what happens. I'm going to run my code, and all my snakes moved up. Now, why do you think they did that? Well, they did that because we told them to. What this means is that every single enemy that we create is going to do this exact thing. So we've told all of our enemies to move up, but we don't want them to move up. We want them to move back and forth horizontally. So if I were to put this, for example, add three pixels to the X coordinate, then what would happen is they would do that, which is a start except they all just kind of hit the edge and then they stop because all we've told them to do is go to the right. So what we need to do is figure out how can we tell them to go back and forth and back and forth. Well, this would have to alternate between three and negative three because if I change that to a negative three and run my game, they go the other way, which is good. So how could we get them to go back and forth? And now we get to introduce something called variables. If I go up to the very top of the code and press enter a few times, you can see that I get some white space. And I'm going to declare a variable. I'm going to say, computer, please make an integer variable. And see how int is red? That means it's a keyword. I am making an integer variable. I'm going to call it x move. And I'm going to set it initially to be 3. And instead of saying plus 3 here, I'm going to say plus x move. And so x move is going to be the value of 3. So you might think, well, you're really just adding 3. And you're right, I am. I'm adding 3. So if I run this, it's going to work the exact same way as it did before. I'm adding 3, and so it just keeps on going. But by having a variable, that's going to allow me to do some math. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let's move the snake to the right. But if we get the x coordinate, and it turns out that the x coordinate is bigger than, let's say, 590. Now, you might think, why is he picking 590? Well, remember, the world is 600 pixels wide. So 590 is almost at the edge. So if the x-coordinate grows to be bigger than 590, I'm going to do something in here. Now how can I change x-move from 3 to negative 3? And the answer is, I can take x-move and I can multiply it by negative 1. If I multiply something by negative 1, basically it just switches the sign. And the beautiful thing about this is that it's going to work both ways. If I take 3 and multiply it by negative 1, then I'm going to get negative 3. And then if I take negative 3 and multiply it by negative 1, I'm back to 3. And it can toggle back and forth and back and forth. Now, the way I've written this is I've taken the x move variable and I multiply by negative 1. However, what I want to do is replace the value of the x move variable. And so I'm going to put this in front. x move equals x move times negative 1 semicolon. And this says I want the new value of x move to be the previous value times negative 1. All right, let's see what happens when I run this. So I'm going to run it. Oh, and look, I got a bounce. Now I'm not going to get a bounce this way because I haven't coded that part quite yet. But if I do one more thing, I am going to use an OR. 
And this in the computer world means or. So if the x-coordinate gets to be bigger than 590, or if the x-coordinate gets to be smaller than 10, oh, forgot some brackets, then I want to switch x move from positive to negative. Now you see how I have an error here? That's because I have to have brackets around this entire big if statement because this is really one condition that needs to get checked. One of these things has to be true in order for us to toggle x move. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to result in us getting our desired effect where it bounces and it bounces the other way as well. Beautiful. And then we can still play by shooting our snakes. So that little bit of code here, it's not that much. This allows us to have the snake bounce back and forth. And this is a variable that controls the movement of the enemy. So that's it. So now we have movement back and forth. And next we're going to learn how to restrict our shooting so that we're not shooting so much.